Citizen 12 is brought to you by Complexify, a social purpose corporation founded to support you living in alignment with your conscience and discerning what that is. Find out more at complexify.org. Complex, I, P H Y, dot org. Hello, citizens. My name is Paige Halsey. And my name is Emily Bogan. And this is episode 13 of the Citizen 12 podcast. Citizen 12 is not a program or health treatment, but an inclusive place, common ground to share and learn. If you have not yet listened to episode zero, we invite you to do that. You'll get a good sense of what the show is about and hear our steps, which were inspired by Alcoholics Anonymous, and those can also be found through any of our sites. A little more of a preface. This show, this content may stir stuff up for you. In some ways, that's part of the point, but also we want to acknowledge that this can be hard, uncomfortable, even disruptive. Please engage with us responsibly, and don't be on your own with this. Be in touch if that's the right thing. We care about you. It's why we're making this show. Our podcast is created in Seattle, Washington. We acknowledge this as Duwamish land and strive to honor the past, present, and future indigenous lives here. Citizen 12 supports Duwamish tribal services by paying real rent. Find out more at realrentduwamish.org. Today's show is all about prayer. As promised, this episode and the next will address the topic of prayer. Today, we have two segments. First, we'll kind of talk about like common concerns or questions, and then we'll kind of give our additional take on those concerns, and then we'll discuss some of our experiences with prayer. And then in the follow-up show to this episode, we'll go over common set prayers or what I think of as set prayers, like the serenity prayer, the set-aside prayer, the St. Francis prayer, and other prayers. Mm. So a little bit of a different setup for this show and the next. As I've said in the last couple of episodes, we're experimenting with format. We are we're still finding our way with making the show and and I you know we we continue to really appreciate the feedback that we've been getting and we're going to continue to try to make the show uh, I was going to say more listenable but you know what I mean better for you the list our listener okay segment one we still want a cool name for the segment, but we don't have one. So it's like common questions or concerns about the context of prayer. And we thought we would, oh, did you just have an idea? FAQ? It's not cool, Frequently but asked, it is. It's not cool. Frequently asked. Frequently asked questions. It is true that I find that these are frequently asked questions. Mm. I think my my part of why I haven't wanted to do this like a Q and A is that I'm we're setting ourselves up to act like we have answers, and I feel a little sheepish about that. A, a, a few episodes ago, we talked about how we really see this as fleshing things out rather than like clearing things up, and there's something about framing it as a Q and A that makes it sound like. It's really simple and it's totally straightforward and it's the same answer for everybody. Mm -mm. And I hate that. Mm -hmm. That's just not how it really is. And I know I have a partic some particular hangups about semantics and language and stuff, but obviously because I think it really matters. Well, in a way, it's kind of what we're doing here with these like 12 steps that we've taken and adapted from Alcoholics Anonymous, right? It's like not adapted. Sorry. Sorry. Inspired by. Inspired by. Alcoholics Anonymous was was. It was important to Alcoholics Anonymous that we use the word inspired, inspired. rather than adapted. Inspired. Okay. So adapted. We, we were inspired by these. Sorry, just one more word about that. For If anybody wants to read the statement that Alcoholics Anonymous asked us to use, that's available on the webpage, mm -hmm. which is on 
complexify.org slash C12. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, and it's also read in episode zero of this series. Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry, back to what you were saying. Well, I'm, it's not a container and it's not, it's, it's, there's more, we're fleshing it out, which means it's, it's, it's not ending, you know, it, there's no end. It's an right. infinite sort of opening continuing yes. to shed light on and yes. fleshing out i think i said we're just going to keep opening cans of worms and i realize like that's not a good fit for like a lot of people just don't like that that feels very funky or tenuous and for better and worse not that's like a physics ca- class then. well it's kind of like i mean if you know me Paige, you know that's just kind of how i do is like keep opening cans of worms mm-hmm. so uh, there might be other people whose part of their life path is to like nail that stuff down and that's just not really what I find I have to offer and so you know and part of the show is like us getting to share with you our listener what we think is good about what we have to offer so I don't have good final conclusive answers to offer I have my our additional light to shine on these things right so, listeners, if you think of some snazzy segment title for this, uh, let us know. But uh, with all that said, we're gonna we're gonna get started with these sort of questions about mm-hmm, prayer. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna be the voice <laughs> of the common person. <laughs> um, me, Emily. Uh, so the first thing that I've wondered and I'm still wondering is. This, like, don't I need to know what or who I'm praying to? So, I guess for clarity, do you feel like you still have these this question? And if if you do, okay. I just out of curiosity, right? Or do you feel like this is something you've actually kind of? And I we 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 are using this question because both of us have for sure had this question for ourselves. And then also we have observed that people mm-hmm. frequently have this question okay. about prayer. Right. Let me slip into this question. Okay. Yes. I I think I've realized that I don't need to know anymore what I'm praying to in order to pray. You're blowing my answer here, girl. Um, sorry. <laughs> the, so my process has been in in like h- how do I know what to say or how to say it if I you know without knowing what I'm praying to? Like how do I know how to relate to something, someone, some entity? Okay. If I don't understand what it is. Okay. So, and are you saying you still have this as an active question, or are you saying that you have had this question in the past? And I think I have it still because sometimes I kind of have to situate myself a little bit. Like, why isn't this prayer this this prayer isn't like this doesn't feel quite right? And then I have to, and then I kind of I think about well, like who like who am I talking to? Okay, what so kind it does of, still come up for you, yeah, it sounds like. what kind of, who's on the other end of this? Yeah, so it, d- it still does kind of come up for me because, well, and we were going to talk about the fact that, like, I so I grew up Christian. I'm still culturally Christian. And so I have a lot of ideas about God that I can't just take out of my brain. And that has... There's often in the question of, am I praying to that? And how is that affecting my prayer? Okay. So, and, uh, you know, thank you for sharing all of that. You're welcome. Did I get ahead of myself? No, I don't think so. I'm trying to think. So I really appreciate you fleshing it out. I I think a lo- you spoke to a lot of the good reasons that so many of us have this question. I hadn't anticipated that we would talk about why we find ourselves with these questions particularly. Mm -hmm. And, but you did a good job. The things that you spoke to, I think are what I have noticed in myself and others are the reasons this is a common question. Mm, Ah, yes. Okay. I see what you're saying. So that's great. Yeah. I, I think I was, 
also just hoping to make space for if some of these questions I think aren't really particularly present questions that you actually have mm. for us to discuss but but and I mean they resonate and I've and they're familiar because yes of yes. course I just was saying for the sake of the segment it's not like you have to embody that you're really asking the question right. more just as a way for us to talk about well, it it's I I don't I still feel like me from ten years ago is is, is still you know it's in like here right time <laughs> yeah. and space like relativity whatever like I don't think that that part of me is gone necessarily yeah. so like I yeah they're still pertinent relative yeah I mean, even though we don't I mean we may not be stuck on them the way we have right, in the past no so so the question is don't I need to know what I'm praying to yeah and I think I can give a like. I think I understand that question in terms of like, I can't do this if I don't know what I'm praying to. Kind of. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. Well, this is why people find themselves asking this question right. is that, you know, we're like, people are like, hey, prayer's good. You should pray all the time. And then you are like, well, I can't pray, I can't pray. because don't I need to know what I'm praying to? Right. It's why we started off with this question. Right. Okay. And I guess I didn't say it earlier. The show is about prayer. We, we, there's no chance Emily and I are going to cover all of the pertinent things about prayer. And if we didn't say this about meditation, I'd like to now. We're not, we are not experts about meditation or prayer. We are, people who have had the experiences that we've had with them and we think it, it turns out we have stuff to say about them this is these are not comprehensive podcasts about prayer or meditation this is really just to add our pieces to this to this area mm -hmm. so now this topic this question do i need to know who i'm praying to the very short my very short sense and as you've already pointed to is no it's just no i do, i haven't it turns out I haven't needed to know what I'm praying to in order to practice praying, play with praying, and pray. Nope, haven't needed to know. Now, access to that as an answer, it has included me do like putting forth effort to set that concern aside so that I can just pray. And it did take some trust and interest in prayer to be willing to set that concern aside in order to just pray. And my experience says that, that it was totally safe and effective. And you've heard me say before, by many people's standards, I'm an atheist. And then I have an, I pray, I make prayers. Like, a, like I pray a bunch of times every day. So one could say, I still don't know what it is or who it is that I'm praying to, yet I still have this full, functional, active prayer experience. Same. Same. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I hope we didn't trick anybody into thinking that we were going to tell you who you're praying to. <laughs> We don't have that. I don't have that answer. And actually, if it's okay with you, I'll, I can say before we record, we we make we have a a, mm -hmm. a little ceremony of making a prayer, and we use word. I mean, you, I use the. I think I use the word God today. I use different words sometimes because uh, because prayers are made of words, and so I have to say something. Mm -hmm. But to me, the the those words and uh, and i said yeah i said god uh it for me it's just a, a placeholder that word right. god is really a placeholder for the thing that i the feeling and the sentiment that i am communicating with and actually i don't think it's I, it might be useful for me to share that that there was a good long period and maybe this is even still true that I pray, my intention when I pray is to pray to the thing that animates the universe. Like that, like whether that's nature or time or God or what, like that's what I'm intending to, to speak to. Mm -hmm. And, and like whatever it, so, and I have even said the words, okay, here I am praying to whatever it is that's making it be that I'm alive. 
or like that I have a body or that, you know what I mean? Or that the trees are still growing in Mm -hmm. the world. Like I don't, but I don't know what that thing is or, and I, it turns out I haven't needed to Mm -hmm. for the sake of, of developing a prayer practice. It, I, I do find, I do want to add that like it ha- has been important for me to notice that some words do have power and are like are effective in my prayer life. The word God does, I've noticed, bring up in me a sense of being like patronized and like there, it's constrictive. I feel at once kind of punished and like feelings of shame will do come up for me and it's hard to communicate in a loving channel with that word. Excellent. So excellent. I do not I, the, yeah. not the experience but that you're sharing it. Excellent. Excellent. Great. <laughs> I'm you feel punished. Great. That's wonderful yeah. news. So experimenting with goddess has open like is a much more opening you know, overcoming things like dualism and like it just it's a it's a more open, softer, explorative term. And, it, you know, yes, I've feminized the word and who knows why that is has been so powerful for me. I don't think that's the point. I just think I found something that worked for me. Yep. Finding words mm-hmm. that that don't bring stuff up that you didn't mean to bring up. Right. Like when you now, Emily, as an as this mature adult, is, intends to communicate pr- in prayer, you're not trying to talk to some old, I- limited idea that came from other people from your childhood or whatever. No, it gets in the way very much so. Right. And and that is that has been my experience mm-hmm. too. And I and I see this is common for people. Mm-hmm. And Finding like I I almost feels like an explorer like a like an explorer you know when you you we we like have to f- I had to kind of hack my way through the field to figure out pathways that would work for me for prayer and yeah there there were I mean I think I've said it in the show there were times when I didn't feel comfortable using words at all I words. All words seemed too problematic and I and I had to find ways. I mean, now I would think of it as meditating, but I felt like I had to find ways of praying and presencing the value of prayer without using words at all because mm-hmm. words were just so problematic. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, all these workarounds mm-hmm. and, and customized, you know, so that it suits you and and is meaningful to you. Right. It. And so what I'm kind of getting from this and what I've observed in my own is that it really is like a very flexible, always changing thing. It's not like a, like from, yeah, there was a time in my life and like maybe a few years ago that just saying thy will be done, I was needed because I just need, like my prayer was getting in the way. It was becoming like Making a Making other prayers were, t- were getting in the way of being prayerful. Yes. Yeah. Which is so sad and weird, but also totally relatable. Mm-hmm. And I love that you found a way around it. You experimented enough to find a way to get what it was that you needed out of praying mm-hmm. by just saying, thy will be done. Mm-hmm. Which again, it's, it's, it's like not intuitive that you could make that prayer thy will be done without knowing a lot about who you're praying to. But here you sit evidence that that was actually still effective. Mm-hmm. It's, it's lovely. Mm-hmm. And it really matches what I observe. Mm-hmm. The next question, which is only something I've experienced when I am think – I'm talking to someone who is not like-minded or if I'm praying in public, which I don't normally do much, except when I'm on an airplane. I still have this. But anyways, the thing is, <laughs> why am I embarrassed about praying? Yeah. I, embarrassment about prayer. It's not uncommon. about prayer. Well, it's not cool to pray as far as I'm concerned. Well, so when we prepared for the show, I was, I was like, I couldn't tell – I Paige t- thinks it's so cool to pray that she was like, "Wait, are you more? You more embarrassed that that you aren't praying?" praying? I, I, yeah, I couldn't. Are you tell. embarrassed? That you're not praying enough. That I'm not. Yeah. You're joking. But really, when you were saying that you had 
that you related to this question. I didn't know. And when I wrote the question, I guess I did assume that people are embarrassed of making prayers. But for you, because I know that you pray, I, I actually thought you might be saying you've been embarrassed that you don't pray enough. <laughs> right. So I was talking about when I was talking to someone I was recently dating and we were talking about having grown up Catholic and how, you know, we no longer identify with the church, but I was like, kind of like, well, yeah, but I still pray every day, like a lot. And I mean, it wasn't that I was so embarrassed that I wasn't going to be honest, sure, but yeah. I, but it came up, but like it came this up, might make me look weird. Or this bad. might make me look weird. Who knows what this person, but well, oh, that's, well. that's, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, there are people who think it's, weak or I mean it's I don't I'm not going to go into why it would look bad to pray but it's clearly a thing mm -hmm. that not everybody thinks prayer is super duper cool (laughs) apparently apparently so my sense about this though hmm. it's not that I think of prayer as literally just saying words to myself because then it would be like, well, all think, almost all thinking is praying. And that's not my experience. And I, I mean, people say all kinds of things about this stuff. So I've heard people, you know, there's some kind of cliche about worry is prayer, but forget. Do you know what I'm talking about? I can't remember quite how the quote goes, so I apologize. But, you know, some people do feel like all of their thoughts are prayers or something. That's not my experience. But it does seem like when people have hang so much of a hang up about prayer that we might be embarrassed about it, that it might mean we've made prayer out to be something bigger or different than I think it is for me anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think that I mean, I don't think this is what you're getting at, but I you know, I just want to kind of slip in there that I think anyone can make a a prayer life that is like extremely cool for them. Like it just you know what I mean? I just I it's you can I for me it's been like it can be something that I don't think is ridiculous in oh, any way well y- y- I haven't said it for a while but I really I am not into pretense like mm-hmm. pretending right. stuff and I hadn't thought about it but I do think a lot of people think prayer is going to include having to pretend and I just want to say for the record like that pretending is in total conflict with spiritual growth or practice for me mm-hmm. I have not found that any authentic spiritual work that I've done has required me doing pretending and mm-hmm. correct me if I'm forgetting something but pretending is just not part of my practice anymore and pray my prayers I would feel like the last place that pretending would be useful or required so mm. so so I think I mean I totally agree with you that that praying can be what did you say something that isn't ridiculous mm-hmm. yeah beyond that it can just be very simple I mean it can just be whatever whatever needs to be communicated outward. And I can't remember if I said it, but I, I, there is this thought that meditation is like the listening part of a communication with God and the praying is the talking part with uh, in a relationship with God. Mm. And I do, I mean, it, generally, I guess I do sort of relate to it that way. And sometimes there is something for me to communicate outwardly, not just like receiving the, the listening and meditation. And that, and and any but any person i am going to have something different to communicate on on any day or at any time than you might have to communicate with your the thing that you relate to that gives you life and maybe and i'm just just kind of coming to me now maybe the thing you have to say that you just don't want to say is like i'm going to cuss <laughs> um what the fuck god like i remember Like, that actually kind of being an opening for me is when I got to just be like, dude, what the fuck, like, is happening here? And, like, talking in that way and being like, you know, maybe having some words with God that weren't so friendly or polite. Like, maybe what, you know, what people might be, like, avoiding is just having, like, those kinds of conversations that need to get, like, fleshed out you know like the conflict 
I like that. I we'll come back to that when we talk about our experiences with prayer. Okay. You're I it's no secret that you and I the way that we pray sometimes these days very much includes a conversational mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. and communication. Mm -hmm. And yes, I'm saying relationship <laughs> about this thing. And I know that that's funky when we're saying we don't even need to know or name particularly what we're in relationship to. And sorry, it just seems like it's how there is to talk about it. Well, because we're not talking to ourselves. Well, I mean... Well, I don't feel like I'm talking to myself. So I I don't I mean now we like we metaphysically okay. well I mean when you it, right. it, I mean like there are gone. electrical yeah. signals in our minds that's real right when you say words to yourself there are literal electrical signals in your body. I mean that's that's what thoughts are, right? Electrical signals mm -hmm. in our neurons. They're real. Their real prayers are real. They're real electrical signals that are having effects that I don't think we can – are particularly even equipped to measure. Like even if you wanted to try to look at this scientifically, I don't – even if you were just talking to yourself with the intention of communicating about what really matters to you, it's a, a deeply powerful, effective thing to do. Mm -hmm. I'm really moved by that. I, I'm like crying is what I'm saying for people who can't see me right now. She is crying. <laughs> Happy tears. I mean, well, it's exciting. That's super exciting. Me. I just it came up with a book idea when you said that. <laughs> like, Well, do you want to share it publicly or do you want to save it for no, yourself? No, I'm saving it for myself. Okay. Well, cool. We'll, all, we'll get, get back to us I'll in 10 years. I'll let you know years. when it's out. <laughs> I mean, two years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Next. Are we on to the next? Yeah. What about when I get bored with praying? So this is a time when I'm going to ask again. Do you actually – do? You, I mean, I don't get bored anymore with prayer. Do you? Maybe. Or I can't remember the is last Is this the time. same as like when – what about like when it's not something I look forward to or when it's not something I like – it's not like I – it's not my go-to because I don't know. I'm not – like you don't feel like it. Well, I just I you not, heard that's me not what we're talking about here. I I think I th well the, I'll just say the thing I wanted to talk about here is when it feels like the prayer is just going through the motions. Uh huh. Right. When prayer is boring. Right or something and and I know we both have had that experience where 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 we like make a prayer and it feels like it's feels flat or it does feel like we're talking to ourselves. I mean, I, I can think of many times when I've heard people say, I just say a prayer and it's just like, I don't know, I'm talking to myself. This is the one I probably had the least experience with. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So just like the rest of this stuff, I don't totally know the whole scoop here, but I do know, I do know that there's a difference in terms of what it feels like to make prayers from where I just was when I was like moved to tears. And, and for me, that's, that's like when I get related to what I am doing when I pray, it's, it, 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 it makes a difference, but it, I might have to do stuff to get myself into the shape to prayer, to pray. And we're going to talk about this more in our next segment, but that that getting related to what I'm actually doing with prayer. So if it is just I got to check this off the list, I'm supposed to make a prayer in the morning, so I'm going to say the words and I'm going to check it off my list. I mean, a fair number of prayers happen that way from mm. what I can tell. Right. Somebody I, told me I should pray every day or I should pray before I go to sleep or I should do this prayer in the morning or say – and, yeah. you know, and if – and for me, if my motive mm -hmm. is to have it be done, like just that I can say I said the words, then yeah, it's not – it's boring. <laughs> Flat. It, it makes sense in why that's not been my experience because I'm not someone who usually – Is motivated Is like motivated that. by like that sort, sort of like authority scheduling. Like I – you know, don't do. You just like, wouldn't do it. I don't do what everyone tells me to do. Well, not everyone. I mean, I don't do what I'm 
like, you know, like with, with my like spiritual advisor, I got a lot of, yeah, I was told to do that, but yeah. I you just didn't. Well, I <laughs> didn't, if that's how I was, fe- if that's yeah. what it was going to be like. Okay. Cause I, I, d- I, so I made a lot of, I've made a lot of prayers right. like that. Like it's time to make the prayer. So I'm just making it because right. that's what I'm supposed to do. And I don't even know if that's bad, has been bad. I don't know if it's bad either. It, I know it has supported my practice well, and yeah. it means that I pray. I don't ever wait to, f- I don't wait to feel like I'm praying. In fact, and again, I keep saying we're going to talk about this in our next segment, but it has gotten me responsible for doing what it takes to have prayer be meaningful. Because like you, I don't want to make prayers that are just flat or disconnected. But so what I found is that I actually can do what I have to do to make all the prayers count. You're carving out that space. So in a way, that does sound like it can be a great thing if if you build something on top of it. Yeah. I think adding that layer so it's not just like now I don't tell people to well, just say this prayer in the morning. I I frequently say – you know, I would rather have you live out what the prayer is. Like, I don't care if you ever say the words, but if you're getting the effects of the prayer, like let's say a third step prayer, I guess that's where I find myself talking about this most frequently. If you, I would rather have you surrendering how you live in your life than ever making a prayer to surrender your life and not surrendering your life, right? Like the the living out the prayer is the cool part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Saying the words of the prayer is like not the booby prize, but it's like if it's if it's just that, we're not really getting anywhere. Okay, last question. Okay. <laughs> so this one is I pray, but it isn't working. What's the deal? Absolutely, I think <laughs> um, that's been my mindset, even though intellectually i i bet i could get out of admitting it like like like, i understand that that's not how it works like i understand that like just like i'm prayers aren't for asking for things to happen but it's not that that's not what this is about it's like spiritual work can be done with the thought that like some sort of reward is on its way yeah. Um and that's an how, effect. That's how I I I deal with this. Like that is and yeah. that's what we I wanted mm-hmm. to talk about is you know, like what if I'm afraid and I pray for my fear to be removed and it's not removed? That would you know, it's not hard to see why that would feel like the prayer's not working. So at some point I I noticed that this that I that when people talk about this, it, I could see that some of us sometimes are relating to God as like a vending machine. <laughs> like, and I, that might sound really goofy and small and petty and weird, but but I really, I I bet if you look around your community and listen to how people talk about God, you will notice they are sh- like – leaking that they do indeed relate to some extent to God as a like a vending machine. Like we're going to put in our dollar, our prayer or our service or our whatever. We're going to we're going to do our spiritual work. We're going to put the the money in and then we're going to get the candy. Come on. Where's the candy? Where's my relief? Where's my feeling good? Where's my peace of mind? Whoa. I mean Again, it's not hard to understand why we would fall into that trap. A lot of life works that way, that you put the dollar in and the candy comes out. But pulled back and even said plainly like this, most of us are like, well, duh, God's not, that's not how God works. We're not like in charge of God. But whoa, a lot of us act like or accidentally kind of find ourselves acting like we are going to be in charge of God. If I make this prayer, then God's going to do this thing. I think that would mean like we're in charge of God. And I just have never had to be that way. <laughs> I mean, I would have had. Unfortunately. Yeah. Did you say unfortunately? Well, I mean, it's like when that, when, yeah. Okay. It can be unfortunate when, I mean, it can be a disappointing thing when you, that's what you're hoping for. Yes. From where I am, it does not, unfortunately, at all. Right. I mean, if you listen to the last episode, it would mean that I had like 
a, an infinite supply of Cheetos and crack cocaine. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I mean, I'm kidding. I don't think I ever really prayed for those things. Right. But, uh, you know, I, I – God forbid we have a universe that is pa- driven by Paige's personality mm-hmm. and this that kind of prayer, that kind of expectation or demand of God for me is very personality driven. And I I am I'm like very adamantly not interested in having a life given by that part of me. And so to the idea that God would somehow satisfy my personality is very scary to me. Right. I think we can fall into a trap here. And I think what it, what might be helpful is so like even if you're praying to, you know, to be someone who is of service, for instance, like that's what your prayer is. I think in, you can still ask, like for me, I can still ask myself because that's what I do. I don't pray for things anymore. I pray for things like, you know, how do I, how can I be more helpful? How can I be of use? But when, if I really were to ask myself, but what do I want? to get from that prayer why am i praying like, to why be am i useful? praying to be so because i want to live in a constant state of bliss peace. yeah <laughs> which sounds a lot like candy right when i don't want to i don't want to have i don't want life to be hard work right which is in which sounds sure sounds familiar and like old an mm-hmm. old thing right yeah not particularly inspired right and and i know you have had enough grittiness in life to find that we don't actually want it all to be smooth and easy. That's just not – it's not real. Yeah, and enough to know that I'm pretty sure that this is how life is going to be. Going to include the grit. Yeah. The ups and downs. Yeah. In- death, pain, suffering, sadness. Right. All, a lot of the things that we found we were hell-bent on trying to avoid to a problematic degree. It's coming. Yeah. Well, it is coming. Before we come back to talk about our experiences, our like personal experiences with prayer, we pause here to thank and acknowledge our listeners. A big thanks to Charlie for your input and support and Rose to Charlie and Rose. Uh, a, a big thank you to everyone, all listeners for your continued support and encouragement. It means a lot. A reminder here that our patrons, our Patreon patrons, have early access to our episodes. You can find out more at patreon.com slash c12pod. And to each of you listening, thank you. Your time and attention, really, it does. It means so much to us. Okay, so a little about our personal journeys with prayer. I thought I would share that like you, I was raised in a in a Christian family with – there was a lot of, like, fluctuation in that in my young childhood, but prayer was something that I was taught about even when I was pretty little. I definitely remember praying, like, having my own deal with prayer by, like, age seven or eight. I remember saying the Lord's Prayer before I would fall asleep at night. And then when I was a little older – my mom and when i was a kid my mom was going through a lot of spiritual religious exploration and at some point i i, I do i want to say around 10 years old my mom probably as she was learning this recommended that when i pray i pray in three ways every time that i pray in gratitude and that I pray for others and that I also pray for myself. And I'm sharing that because I don't think, I think that in terms of like advice about prayer, that's that in my experience is pretty benign and lovely. I've, we've talked before about how powerful it is to generate being gen, uh, not generous, gr- grac- gra- grateful and saying prayers that ingratitude can be a tool to help generate gratitude. And same with thinking of others. So praying for others, however you do, whether that means you, I mean, I don't 
I don't any longer pray for outcomes for people or for myself, but that doesn't mean that I can't say, make a prayer. And I do say that I'm thinking of them, that I'm, you know, grateful for their presence in my life, that I pray for, I guess I do pray for people to be reassured about their path. I guess that is to some extent an outcome. It's a pretty broad outcome, but Back to my point, it does keep my, it helps me practice expanding my attention away from me and my personality and problems and onto out into the world and onto other people. I used to say this really cute prayer and like every night when, since I learned it, my grandma had sent me like a prayer card. I didn't, I was I had a pretty mystical experience with the Christian church and so did my father. So like we were the kind of like, I don't know if you guys know we like Harry Potter, but like I really remind, my family reminds me a lot of like the Weasleys. So like when we got our shit together enough to like go to church, we would. So I didn't have anyone like shoving Christianity down my throat. So like I had a pretty, pretty gentle experience with it. I don't, I still think it was very damaging for me as like a, as a doctrine but I did have like a little bit of a prayer and it's interesting to me because it was about like angels and angels are feminine figures and it now that I like have sort of now that I've found that it's I prefer to pray to a more feminine figure it's not so surprising to me looking back that I enjoyed praying to angels rather so that was kind of my experience growing up. I said the same thing every single night, the same exact thing every single night. Do you um, want to tease it now and we'll include it in our follow-up show? What do you mean tease it? I mean not say what the prayer was. Yeah, And absolutely. save it and we'll talk about it in our follow-up For show. For sure. That's some industry term. Uh-huh. Teasing. Teasing. It's Sorry. Te- it's I'm terrible. I'm not hip to the lingo. Yeah. It's, it's a weird term. But Yeah. Yeah, but we do hope you'll turn tune in back again for the follow up show and hear what mm-hmm. your sweet childhood angel prayer was. Mm-hmm. I got something out of it, but there was a sense of there was a feeling of gratitude. Other people were included, and there was a desire for an outcome. My desire was to not have bad dreams, and like, did it? Did you get to the vending machine cash out? Did you have bad dreams? I asked to not have bad dreams or bad thoughts, and it actually did kind of help, actually. Cool. Yeah. That was what it was like. So. Is that what you wanted me to share? Yeah. Okay. Or what, I mean, whatever you want to share. That was my experience with prayer. Yeah. Like before this, I mean, not that it's distinct. I, I mean, in some of the darkest times in my life, my most lonely, my my bleakest, ugliest times, I prayed quite a lot. I prayed for relief from my circumstances, for freedom from the trap that I was in. I I have, I have, I had a lot, I've had a lot of experiences with prayer. Prayer, prayer, it, it feels like prayer has come more naturally. I suspect it's cultural and that, you know, I was Rec- it was recommended to me that I do praying and I and I appreciate that I'm grateful for it I think it it has made it easier to use as a tool now as an adult but but some aspects of prayer have really changed and and the first thing that I thought we would talk about here in terms of what it is now kind of goes back to this thing about being responsible for where I'm praying from and I I didn't make this up but I, Praying from humility and honesty for me is like indispensable. And my my kind of joke about this is like I can say a prayer while I'm brushing my teeth, but it's pretty hard for me to get like really related to what the I'm doing and to get into a position of humility and to get myself prepared to be that vulnerable and honest while I'm brushing my teeth or while I'm like waiting at the bus stop or, you know, in the car. And, and I do make prayers 
at those times sometime, but there really is this distinction for me between like high quality, thoughtful prayer. And I have, I'm committed that I keep that alive. Mm. And it's easy. It has been easy for me to notice, oh, I haven't, I haven't been doing that. Right. It's, it's kind of, it's way natural to just find myself making perks while I'm brushing my teeth and then be like, oh, hey, this isn't, this isn't the whole thing here. Let's, let's go. And I like some ceremony around prayer. I like to get down on my, I actually like to pray on my hands and knees. I like praying prostrate, prostrate. And, you know, sometimes I do like to light a candle or chime a chime, or I've said these things before, but, but I guess I'll just say my whole thing. You know, when you're in an airplane and you look down and you're like, whoa, we're so tiny. We're just like a tiny little flea flying over this tiny little plant. Like I find the experience of flying in airplanes so reorienting to perspective and I love it. I've always loved flying. People usually say, oh, you just haven't flown enough. I've flown a lot. Like people get tired of flying. And yes, I know what it's like to be tired of traveling, but I love being in an airplane. I love that experience of getting reoriented to my to my size in the universe. It's very visceral experience when I fly. And that is what I'm striving for when I get humble, when I make a prayer. So I have the the good fortune to see mountains from one of my windows, the view from our home. And when I can, you know, see those mountains and kind of get reoriented to how temporary my life is for me. I mean, this is part of generating humility. Making a prayer from there is really different than just like, I'm Paige, I'm brushing my teeth or what, I, you know what I mean? Like in the rest of my day. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. I find a responsibility to accurately articulate where I am to orient myself like that is what I feel called to do because I'm not just Emily brushing my teeth I'm and like I'm being asked to go deeper like and it's weird it's like that is what I am being called I think to do in prayer is to find a way to understand my orientation in relation to whatever it is that I'm praying to yeah. I realized that I, w- I was realizing earlier today that th- someone was talking about being desperate mm. and desperation. I don't know. In my community, desperation gets talked about a fair bit, <laughs> but I don't know how common that is out in the rest of the world. But it it was kind of sinking in for me that Praying from des- – I actually have found that praying from a position of desperation is excellent. It's like a really powerful, beautiful, effective place to pray from. And people like generally in the world avoid being or feeling connected to their degree of desperation. And I know for myself for decades, I have really – valued staying related to the reality of my degree of desperation. And, you know, on one hand, I'm like pretty healthy. I have a semi-working physical body. I have a safe home. I have lots of beautiful things. That doesn't sound very desperate. And on the other hand, I'm I'm a I'm a 38-year-old bag of blood that is not particularly durable and doesn't probably have that much time left in the grand scheme of things to live the rest of my life and I don't really know what I'm doing with myself as none of us do and we're all in the chaos and trap of our culture and you know from there it's not hard for me to get related to how desperate life is and it seems good and useful to get related to that for prayer. It puts a smile on my face. It puts a smile on your face. It's cool. It's it's paradoxical. Yeah. I um I don't know how intentionally, but I definitely find a way to stay related to my own desperation. 
I, 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 we, time and time again. I bring it up here <laughs> because I, I, it's so easy to think we should avoid being or feeling desperate. Well, we're called to do the exact opposite. Like we really, in our society, to, to, to hide desperation, to pretend it away. What's the opposite of desperation? Like Ar- ha- arrogance, <laughs> having yeah, security. Arrogance. I mean, I think mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, it's the par. I took a class once in college, and we talked about the paradox of power and weakness, and and um, well, weakness was vulnerability, and power was arrogance. So and, it's and very similar. Desperation and weakness can sound similar, and I, I mean, maybe mm-hmm. it is even the same thing. And yes, we're we are people. Oh, it's not news that people like power. Right. And we do a lot. We do a lot to stay um, related to that. And, you know, for me... To distance ourselves. To distance ourselves, avoid our desperation. So I'm I'm, I'm bringing this up to make space for... I mean, in part to, to have relief from being torqued by that dualism. We're not entirely powerless. We're not entirely powerful, clearly. So to go back and forth, swing, you know, have that pendulum mm. swing so hard, mm. it's warping. Mm-hmm. And we, we don't have to – I mean, there are actions we can take to interrupt that. That's, yeah. what, that's what I find us doing. In depth psychology, they talk a lot about the shadow and like shadow aspects of the self, parts of us that we don't, that we don't feel like are appropriate for society and we want to hide desperation being a huge one and i have found myself becoming more and more aware of my own desperation in my own spiritual journey lately and and my you know in in the beginning it was it was like being swung from our arrogance right to the <laughs> other end of desperation which wasn't fun and now kind of realizing no like i want to incorporate this piece into my personality because what was um, appearing to me as this awful monstrosity that I like am terrified of really isn't, you know, it, it's more of what Paige is describing. It really is like this beautiful, humbling experience. Obviously, we've already been talking about how our, cur- our current part of prayer practice includes, well, I do still say sort of some semblance of set prayers. I say something... That's kind of like a blend of a third, seventh step prayer in the mornings, uh, with some other stuff thrown in, and then and then I do. I guess I kind of do have some points that I attempt to hit in the evening. So it's not that I have totally abandoned all set prayers, but I don't. There, it's not the entirety of my prayer experience, and it has, prayer is much more conversational for me. That's what's more comfortable for me. And looking back, I mean, I don't, I don't remember doing conversational prayer as a child. Like really, I do have these memories of praying the Lord's Prayer, like really religiously every day. And then the, that 10 year old gratitude and for other people, that must have been somewhat conversational, but there was still that sort of structured framework. And it was, it was later, as an older teen that I remember, like you were saying, actually trying to work shit out with God and which for me required a more conversational tone. And that's still, that's still there. And really like the, 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 it's not, it's not that I value being conversational. It's that being conversational allows for me to pray the prayer that I need to pray that it 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 means that i'm awake and paying attention to what needs to be said and not just you know automatically relying on well it's time to say the third a third step prayer so does that make sense absolutely same here we will undoubtedly come back to these topics again but that's all for now thank you for joining us this show isn't a thing without you please find us online chime in write to us we are listening for how best to serve. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all at C12pod. That's C12pod. 
It looks to us as though our community could really use this content and we're excited to create and share it. This is a 100% listener supported show. So if you already like what you're hearing, or even if you don't, but you think what we're up to is good, please contribute through Patreon at patreon.com slash c12pod. We're hosting Discord spaces for patrons, and we will include a Dear Citizen segment in future shows. So support us and write in with your questions about practicing the principles of the steps. And support us by subscribing, rating the show, and writing us a review wherever you listen to podcasts. We're now also on YouTube and Spotify if you prefer those platforms. Our thanks to each of you who contribute to this work. Thank you. 